Tabari kai ye, ye tabari kai ye, tin ba min ye tabari kai ye, tina wa ti pie wa yon asyan. Ye tabari kai ye, ye tabari kai ye, tin sa min ye tabari kai ye, tina wa ti pie wa yon asyan. There are plenty of rituals that take place when uh, people are thinking about uh, conceiving. One is uh, dealing with their old wounds because uh, our old wounds have a tendency to override our children's lives. So it is very important that we be able to deal with our old wounds uh, before we even think about uh, doing a conception ritual. And then there is a bonding ritual to allow the couple to bond and to allow the family to bond with them and to create a safe and uh, bonded space for the baby to come in. And then there is another ritual called the um, uh, fertility ritual where they take the women separate, um, the women do that, and the men take the men separate, and where they work with them, and uh, they ask them to really open up, open the spirit to uh, receive uh, this child who is coming. We've always think parenting is a process that occurs after the moment of conception. Now, new interesting studies that were actually derived from studies on cloning cells have uh, entered into the field to recognize something brand new that we didn't see before. It's called genomic imprinting. And it says this, there are two sets of genes, one from the mother and one from the father, after they come together. And before they come together, they don't have a template on them. And the template doesn't arise until just before the egg is ovulated or sometime before the sperm is released. The template actually defines character, a certain character type. And interestingly enough, nature doesn't put the template on until just before the germ cells are released. So, for example, in the egg, two months before the ovulation of the egg, essentially there's no template laid down. And yet, by the time the egg is ovulated, a selected set of genes that the mother is involved with selecting are already specified to be the active ones. The same thing occurs in sperm. There, the male uh, system will select certain genes in the sperm to be activated. So if you're a parent and, and through evolution, genetics is trying to create a survival system, then the imprinting, which goes on even before conception, is important in determining the character of this child after conception. And it's temporal. It occurs months in the state of the egg, two months before ovulation, which set of genes are going to be selected. Why is this important? Because even before the ovulation of the germ cell, like the egg, even before then, the parent's perception of the world is relatively important to select which genes that the egg is going to express even before it meets the sperm. So the fact is, the awareness of the parents even before the conception process contributes to the genetic expression of their child after the conception process. So it's actually, it's conscious conception rather than just conscious parenting. Certainly from the beginning of the last trimester, from six months after conception on, uh, the unborn child really was a, a feeling, sensing, aware, and remembering human being. Then there may be a whole other system which at the moment is not supported by science. Uh, but it is certainly supported by clinical evidence where every once in a while, you know, people uh, under the influence of hypnosis or sometimes even spontaneously have memories which do go back. I mean, in some cases, all the way to conception. Babies can pick up sound after the six months of intrauterine life. Uh, their auditory nerves uh, are as well developed after six months in yours and mine, and uh, scientists have not have not realized for a long time uh, that actually water, which is the amniotic fluid that the baby is surrounded by, is a better conductor of uh, sound than is air. When parents fight, this I this is an extremely upsetting event for babies. Um, even loud noises, for example, will upset babies. During fetal development, the fetus 
starts to acquire perceptions by reading what the mother is responding to and adjusting its biology in the same accordance as the mother is adjusting her biology. Any kinds of threats on the system or threats to the survival of the fetus are locked into the perception. These perceptual beliefs are then, which are the, are the elements which control the expression of the body of this developing fetus and of the biology and behavior of the newborn once, once birth has occurred. It is very important that uh, everybody be able to align their spirit with that of the incoming soul. And that is one of the reasons why, for instance, we create a shrine dedicated to the uh, incoming soul where people can go and communicate with the incoming soul and uh, be able to bond with the incoming soul while uh, um, he's still in the womb. And uh, also to be able to con continuously work on their feelings so they're not uh, leaving any kind of uh, signal indicating that you know they don't either want this child or they're having uh, some emotional crisis with it. Otherwise, what ends up happening is that you carry negativity into the child's life. And because the soul is so permeable at the times that we pick up on everything and will later on suffer from those kind of uh, uh, encounters. With human infants, you find that there are certain signals built into the neural structure that must be activated at birth. Six to 12 inches from a face, you're getting lots of other input. What are you getting? The heartbeat. Tremendous research which has shown that put immediately adjacent to the mother's heart, profound changes then are taking place in the infant's heart. The model of that mother's heart and the electromagnetic fields which hearts produce literally keeps the infant's heart pattern stable. So that critical opening imprint is literally the imprint of the heart, the heart which is the source <coughs> of love, the highest intelligence of the human being, and the great discoveries of neurocardiology, which is the most exciting medical field which has opened up in the last 15 or 20 years, is the discovery that the heart itself is a major source of intelligence in the human, human being and that intelligence must be established from the very beginning. And it goes through the same developmental stages as everything else. And it's the great modifying, modulating intelligence, the bond of love, that it then expands out to the whole world. When uh, the uh, baby comes out, the first cry uh, is very important. So all the children who are around are going to cry back exactly the same way as the newborn cried because that is looked at as a message. Just like, you know, when you go to a new country and you only know one person and that person says, I'll be there to pick you up and you don't speak the language, you know, you don't know anybody else. So when the person is there, it's like, you can relax and feel happy. But when you get there and uh, you say hello, anybody around and nobody responds to it, then that is another wound that uh, is uh, uh, put on the soul. And uh, the child can then have a harder time healing that wound later on that were wounds of isolation, of uh, having a hard time connecting with people begin because uh, when the first cry was sent out, nobody really responded to that uh, cry. And so the baby then interprets it as meaning, I am on my own. I have to make everything by myself. But if people responded to it, then the newborn will send a message back to where it came from, telling uh, 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 its people, yes, I did arrive at the right place and uh, everything is fine. And so welcoming is very important because uh, birthing or coming into this world is one of the first initiation that we really have in our life. And uh, unless we are welcome, the uh, process is never complete.